Hello, I'm Dr. Hassan Tawheed and I'm here once again with an outstanding topic as usual, understanding systematic reviews. Welcome back. Understanding systematic reviews. So what is the concept behind the idea of systematic review? First of all, we need to understand what a systematic review is. As I have discussed previously, if you have watched my previous videos, a systematic review is one of the topmost pieces of evidence and it is on the top of the pyramid on study design pyramid, as you can see over here. Systematic review is side by side with meta-analysis. So what is unique about systematic review, why it is on the top. Remember, the study design pyramid suggests that any study that is more relevant to human treatment will be considered as a strong evidence and they will be on the top of the pyramid. And the studies that are at the bottom will be least related to human treatment or relevant to human treatment. So animal studies and in vitro studies are at the bottom. Not only that, the chances of bias is another thing that decides which study goes on the top and which study goes at the bottom. Systematic review is a systematic study. It's a paper that is written very, very systematically. The chances of bias is reduced. That's why it is on the top of the pyramid. In other studies, the chances of bias is always there and they have higher chances of bias. All the chances of bias is also, are also there in systematic reviews. Don't take me wrong. However, what I'm saying is, that in systematic review, the chances of bias are reduced or lesser in comparison to other studies. So now, what is a systematic review? Systematic review is the study of studies. Yes, like in a clinical trial, you collect patients, right? And you give them medication or intervention and then you record the findings that what happened. In systematic review, you don't collect patients. You don't go to a hospital. You don't go to a field or clinic or a rehab center or a research center, you don't go over. What do you do then? You collect research articles, previously published papers, and they will be your research subjects. So instead of patients, you will be collecting previous papers and you will combine so many papers together and you will write one paper out of it. That is one of the other reasons that I believe that systematic review is on the top of the pyramid too, because you are collecting so many papers together. Now you have data of so many patients. Instead of patient, one patient or two patients or 10 patients, you have 10, 20, 30, 50 papers. Each paper, each clinical trial, for example, can have like 20, 50, 60 patients. So now you have a data of so many patients. So that is why systematic review is one of my favorites and it is considered as one of the strongest pieces of evidence. Now you combine the data of previously published papers and you write one article out. Now, if the studies are similar, it will become meta-analysis. But if the studies are different, that means they are heterogeneous, they are not homogeneous, then you cannot do statistics. You cannot convert that into a meta-analysis. It will remain a systematic review. Now, systematic review is called systematic because we write it in a systematic way. We follow certain guidelines, certain checklists. Most common is Prisma checklist. Once you follow those guidelines and checklists and you decide a robust inclusion exclusion criteria, you are on your way to conduct a wonderful systematic review. Now, the next thing what you do is you make sure that you have a wonderful research question before deciding the inclusion exclusion criteria. The biggest mistake many people do is they decide inclusion exclusion criteria and then they think about research question. No, you decide the research question first and then you do the inclusion exclusion criteria because your research question will serve as a navigation system, like a GPS of, of a car. Once you do that, now you move to the next step. The next step is, as I said, inclusion exclusion criteria. Once that is done, now you collect studies from different databases. Choose at least five databases when you have data from five databases. You also collect data from gray literature, studies that are not published. Another mistake many people do is they think that only published papers from scientific journals are used for systematic review. No, anything that is written can be used. So gray literature that are, that are actually conference papers, thesis, somebody's thesis, somebody's dissertation, they can be used as gray literature. 
you combine all of those together and then you are on your way to a great systematic review. Once you have collected that data, now you cannot just keep them together because you want to make sure that there is less bias, right? So you will check the quality of each article. Yes, you will check the quality. It is called as quality appraisal or critical appraisal. And once you have done it, you only keep good studies, the high quality studies, and now you are all set to write your paper. Once you have done it, your data is extracted. Now you are ready to write your paper. Once you have written it, it's ready to be published. For more details, I have discussed systematic review in far more detail in many of my other videos. But in this video, I just wanted to give you a brief background, a brief idea, the concept and understanding behind the idea of systematic review. I hope you like this video. Keep learning, keep watching. Thank you.